Good afternoon all. Further to my earlier video called eBay Cheap and Cheerful on this little DC to DC converter which generates 5 volts out from really quite low voltages in, I found some interesting uh, facts about it. Now also people ask me about this power supply, so I'll just quickly go over what that is. This is a Minghe model B3603. You should be able to search for that on eBay and find it. It can take anywhere from 6 volts to 40 volts in. It can produce up to 36 volts out at up to 3 amps. Although you'll probably find that uh, above about 2 amps, this regulator, well, this control chip starts to get very hot. I'm feeding in 13.5 volts from some lead acid batteries which are outside my window. Right, let me set this thing to 500 millivolts. In other words, half a volt. Now this unit is still running and producing uh, an output for the LED. I can't be sure whether or not this is the full 5 volts. It may not be. It doesn't really matter too much. If I switch this power supply off and wait for a period of time for this input capacitor there, C1, to discharge, when I switch it back on, this unit does not restart. It sits there in a non-running state. And I have to lift the voltage up to about... 560 millivolts before this unit restarts. So in the data sheet it said that it uh, doesn't start until 0.9 volts. Well I've actually found it can start at about 0.56 volts, 560 millivolts. So you could say that um, 0.6 volts, this one, it may not apply to all of them, but this one reliably starts. But what's interesting is how far I can take this down. Now I, this was apparent in the video that I did earlier, I can actually get the LED to light up right down to 30 millivolts. It's very dim. And if I take it down to 20 millivolts, it still recovers when I lift it back up. And I can even take it down to 10 millivolts. Leave it for a length of time for C1 to discharge. Of course, it's sitting there with about 10 millivolts on it and it will come back up when I raise the voltage up. However, if I take this down to zero millivolts and wait for a period of time, it doesn't recover, or at least it doesn't until the uh, voltage comes back over to the threshold. Let me do that again, because that wasn't very convincing. I'll take it down to zero, wait for a period of time for the input capacitor on this chip to completely lose all its charge, it does not recover. It does not restart. And it actually takes about 550 or 60 millivolts to burst back into life. So although this little DC to DC converter won't start up unless you have about 0.6 volts on its input, which I guess is comparable to a jewel thief, it certainly continues running at really crazy low input voltages all the way down to, and I mean, okay, it's not generating much on the output, that LED is now very dim, but all the way down to 10 millivolts. That circuit is still running because if I lift it up from 10 millivolts, it generates an output. It only completely dies at zero millivolts. Quite impressive that this thing can hang on in there at voltages down to 10 millivolts on the input. Now people were also saying why didn't I measure the output voltage of this little boost converter at different levels of input voltage um, as I reduce the input voltage. So I'm starting at um, 0.6 volts here and I'm going to wind that down and see what happens to the output voltage of this. Now of course this is going to vary depending upon what load I've got. At the moment I've just got this LED with a fairly high series resistor, so it's a very light load on this device. If it were a heavier load, the results I get doing this wouldn't apply, it would be different. But let's give that a try. Let's bring this down to half a volt. Still got 5 volts on the output, 0.4. Right, so at about point. Uh, four, 
the output just starts to creep down from 5 volts. So that's, so I've got 30 millivolts now on the input and the output is holding at 4.1. Let's go down a bit further. Got 20 millivolts on the input and the output is providing over 3 volts, 3.1. Let's come down. The output's now starting to fall away quite rapidly. The LED is still on there. It's receiving 2.3 volts. So 10 millivolts on the input. This is the actual reading, but this briefly shows the setting. I've set it to 10, it's reading about 13. Still got two volts on the output. The LED is still lit. Let's bring this down to nine, eight, seven, six, sorry, uh, 60, 50, 40, 30. Now 20 is where the LED actually goes off and we're only seeing 1.2 volts on the output. At 30 millivolts on the input, the LED is on because we've got 1.6 volts on the output. So, th so that shows the sort of relationship between these tiny voltages on the input and these fairly reasonable voltages on the output, enough to light a red LED. Now, I've got some plans uh, for using one of these things in a, a different circuit altogether. Um, possibly this one, possibly uh, another one which has the USB socket um, mounted on it. They're a tiny bit more expensive, but it might be worth getting one of those. And in those experiments, it will be relevant for me to hook a scope up to the input and also the other trace of the scope onto the output. So we can see how the input voltage dropping down affects the output voltage, which will probably hold and then fall off a cliff. Um, so that'll be coming up, I don't quite know when, but at some time soon. Cheerio.